Again, welcome to Pick Dr. Osmore's Brain. We're going to be talking about bone health. So let's dive in with a couple of things that I want you to understand. First and foremost, about bone health. Number one, I want you to understand a concept called Wolf's Law. Wolf was actually a physicist or a uh, uh, physiologist, and um, this is the fundamental law about bone that you want to understand. And your muscle actually works on the same premise. What is Wolf's Law? Wolf's Law states that bone grows based on pressure. So where there's pressure, external pressure, typically in most cases from gravity, right, then we have an increased message neurologically as well as physiologically going to the bone, telling the bone to become more dense. That's Wolf's Law. So basically it states that external pressure on bone creates an increase directly proportional to that pressure of increase in bone density. So again, an increase in bone density as a result of pressure. And this is why those of you maybe who have a diagnosis of osteoporosis or osteopenia or you know pre or, or early bone loss, this is why so many doctors say you need to make sure that you're exercising because exercise is a force, it's an external force that's being put on those bones that allows them to basically say, hey, we need to turn on, we need to activate, we need to become more dense. So think of it like this. I'm going to make all of that Wolf's Law stuff that sounded more complicated than what it actually is very, very simple. Your body works under the fundamental premise of use it or lose it. If you're not using the bone, your body will perceive that as a lack of use and it will say we're going to take those resources that are going into building bone and we're going to take those resources and use them somewhere else and then bone density starts to deteriorate. Now it is true that after a certain peak age typically for women that's around 35 same thing for men we're going to start seeing bone density slowly subtly decline as a result of changes in hormonal output How, however that doesn't mean we're going to see a steady state of bone loss and decline that is pathological or that is disease uh, like a disease state like osteoporosis or osteopenia so again some bone loss decline over age or over time is normal but we don't anticipate seeing aggressive bone loss now we do see that we will see aggressive bone loss in many of you who have gluten sensitivity for a number of different reasons which we're going to be diving into tonight um, but before we get into that I want to talk a little bit too about and let me grab my towel I want to talk a little bit too about um, lab testing. So when it comes to lab testing, one of the things that um, that people often get confused about is this myth of the bone scan. A lot of doctors run this bone scan and uh, what they're basically doing with a bone scan, a DEXA scan, is they're shooting x-rays into your bone and these x-rays are being absorbed by your bone and the doctors are measuring how much of those x-rays are being absorbed by your bone and then they're crunching the numbers it's what we call Z, Z scores and T scores and they're basically telling you where your bone stands as it relates to the average uh, to the average female of 35 years of age that's what a bone scan basically brings back it tells you how your bone compares to your peers of a similar age the problem with the bone scan is it's only measuring x-ray absorption. So understand that the quality of your bone is not a direct reflection of how many x-rays it can absorb. That certainly helps us to identify the density of your bone, but not the quality of your bone. Remember, we can put a lot of minerals into your bone with drugs. Those bisphosphonate drugs that doctors like to prescribe make your bones very, very hard. Unfortunately, when you make your bones more hard and more mineralized, you also make them more brittle. It doesn't make them more stronger or more pliable. So, again, a bone scan is only basically a reflection of how much x-ray your bone absorbs, and that's not quality bone. In essence, that doesn't necessarily, a bone scan doesn't, the, the outcome of a bone scan test does not indicate the quality of your bone. It only indicates how many x-rays your bone is absorbing. If you take these bone building drugs, then you, you certainly put more calcium into your bone which makes it look better on a bone scan but it doesn't increase the quality of your bone and that's what I want you to understand is that again if you're basing all of your decisions about what you need to do to improve your bone health on a bone scan you can get into trouble you can create brittle, brittle more brittle bones one of the side effects of some of these bone building medications is actually something called osteonecrotic fracture what does that mean that means the bone itself becomes too mineralized 
and it actually becomes brittle. And where what we see as a side effect with these types of bones is, is an osteonecrotic fracture of the jawline. So we get micro fractures in the jaw. It's one of the common side effects of these medications. And again, think about the importance of that as it relates to nutrition. How are you going to build bones if you can't eat, if you don't have good nutrition? Because you create fractures in your jaw, so now it hurts to chew your food. And so now you have to you know, eat a slurry or drink Ensure. A lot of doctors recommend those products as liquid products, as liquid nutrition products full of corn syrup, full of genetically modified corn syrup and soy sugars. And those are horrible for your bones as well. If you create fractures in your jaw using the medication, it's not going to improve your nutritional outcome and your capacity to chew foods that are going to deliver a high bone building nutrients. So again, it's important before you make a decision to get on any of those types of medications, ask deeper questions. So here we have lab testing. The myth of the bone scan, again, it's not super reliable in terms of bone quality. It's only reliable in terms of how many x-rays your bone has the capacity to absorb. Now, the other part of this is what other lab tests do we really want to look at? What other lab tests do we really want to run? If we're trying to analyze the health of the bone, there's a couple of very, very critical and important lab tests that I highly recommend that you have looked at. One of them, and these are both, by the way, these are two of these are urine tests. Number one is a test called deoxy, this is a mouthful here, pyridinoline. So deoxypyridinoline, oftentimes referred to as a Pyrolynx D test. It's a standard lab test. Again, it's a urine test. Another one is called osteocalcin. Now what these are measuring, these are measuring different proteins that come out in your urine because if these proteins are coming out in high quantities, aggressive quantities in your urine, what it tells us, and it tells us this um, quite, quite effectively, it tells us how fast your bone is breaking down versus how fast it's building. Remember this, bone is brand new every seven years. So your entire skeleton remodels itself about every seven years. So bone is one of those that takes a long time to build and break down and build more, but every seven years you have a brand new skeleton. If we're doing a bone scan and we're using a bone scan, remember that the accuracy of a bone scan is only good about every two years. So meaning that if you're running a bone scan and you do a bone scan this year and then you do another one next year, that's really not enough time to go by to tell us whether or not the therapies that you were doing, whether it was exercise, medications, or nutrition, were effective at improving that bone scan. In essence, you need to wait about two years in between bone scans to get an accurate assessment. So what do you do in a two-year time frame when you don't know whether or not your bone is getting better or whether your bone is getting worse? You run these two tests. These are monitoring tests. It's what we basically want to see every so many months. I like to run them about every six months. Um, initially, I sometimes will run them even as quickly as every three months. Initially, just to see, because if we get a, a, a high level of deoxypyridinoline and, and a high level of osteocalcin coming out of the urine, Again, it's telling us that bone is breaking down faster than it's building, and that means you're progressing more toward bone loss. That means if you've already got osteoporosis or osteopenia, it's progressing and it's getting worse. So if we get a baseline of where you're at, and that baseline is high, then we can come back three months later after we've done aggressive diet and exercise and nutritional therapies to see whether or not we've had an impact on those markers. So again, make sure that you... If you're working with somebody, if, you, if you're working with your doc and, you, and he's saying, here, I want you on this medication, you need to exercise more, we'll do a bone scan in two years and see what happens. Ask them to run these tests every three to six months. That way you have some kind of an indicator as to whether or not your diet and your lifestyle changes are actually working in your favor, as opposed to waiting two years to, to be told, no, your, your osteoporosis is more aggressive or my osteopenia has now progressed into osteoporosis. So you don't need to wait two years to get data back on this. So make sure your doctor is running those labs on you. Very, very important. Now, another lab that I would recommend, and this one every six months, is it's called lymphocyte proliferation. And this is of your nutrients, of your nutritional status. 
So this type of test actually measures your vitamins and your minerals, things like calcium and magnesium and zinc and selenium and chromium and copper and B vitamins and vitamin K and vitamin E and vitamin D and vitamin A. Um, important nutrients as it relates to bone health. So how can you just, let's go back again. Okay, doctor says here's a drug to improve your bone density by forcing more calcium into your bone. The reason you have bone loss is still in question. In essence, just because you have low bone density does not mean that you have a calcium deficiency. That's another one of those myths. It's what I like to call the calcium deficiency myth. Meaning that you have bone loss, therefore it was caused by calcium deficiency. That's what 99% of, well I can't say that accurately, that's what most doctors that I hear say to patients and these patients come in to see me and say, well, my doctor told me to take calcium or my doctor told me to take a vitamin D and a calcium supplement because I have osteoporosis. When they've never actually even ascertained as to why the osteoporosis exists. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.